Hey, what's up guys? This is Guy here. Today I'm going to talk about the Synology 1621 XS Plus. This is the new NAS that I'm going to install in my home network. I've been talking about my NAS here on this channel for a while. Right now I'm using my home network, the QNAP TS364. It's a three bay NAS that has 24 terabyte with a 2.5 gigabit per second to my home network, but I need more speed, more performance and more capacity specifically for my video production business and my YouTube. So I reached out to Synology and they were good enough to send me the disk station 1621 XS Plus that I'm going to install with you today. They have different types of NAS for different budget and different uses for businesses or home networks. And this one here for my video production is what I really need. I'm going to show you how I use it. NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. It's a storage space that you have in your network as a business or a home network, allowing you to share files with other devices inside or outside of your network. And today a NAS is not only limited to storage, it does way more than storage. So I'm going to create a series of videos showing you all the different services and capabilities that I can get from this NAS. So why do I need a NAS like this? First of all, I don't like to delete data. I can keep my data as much as I can. So I need a NAS where I have more storage. And I told you I have 24 terabyte now. This one will even have more. I'm going to have 36 to begin with and we'll still have some other base to add disk if I want to in the future. And I want to share my files between different devices. I can shoot a video on my phone, for example, and instead of uploading the video to Google Drive and then downloading it on my MacBook Pro for editing, I can directly upload the video to the NAS and then I can either copy the video to my MacBook Pro for editing or I can edit directly on the NAS. That's why the speed with which the NAS connects to the network is really important and I'm going to tell you why this one resolves many of my problems. And this one here has many features that I really like. The first one is that it has six bays compared to what I had before with three bays. I am not very limited. To begin with, I'm going to install four 12 terabyte hard drives on this NAS. It's going to give me under RED 5, 36 terabyte that I can use. And the other feature that I like beside the six base that I have is the 10 gig ethernet. That is very helpful for video editing. As I told you, I can edit directly from my MacBook with the files that are on the NAS. And I'm going to use it along with this 10 gig switch that I have in my home network. I installed it in one of my period videos. So I have 10 gig going from the NAS to the switch and then going from the switch to the UDM and any other device in my network. So I will be able to edit with the very high speed. Another thing that I like is the SSD cache. So you are able to speed up your writing and reading speeds by using NVMe disks on this NAS. And you have two spots to put your NVMe's. In the box with the NAS, you get two ethernet cables to connect to your network you get one power cable these keys to lock your bay and you also have some screws underneath that we have a quick installation guide and of course the NAS itself well wrapped up in front of the NAS we have some light for status and alert we also have this big button here to power on the NAS. Next to that, we have three lights for LAN 1, LAN 2, and LAN 3. These are corresponding to the three LAN ports that we have in the back, the 10 gig port and the two 1 gig that we have on the side. And of course, we have the six bays for the drives. We also have one USB port in the front to transfer data from or to your NAS. And in the back of the NAS, we have, of course, the power slot. And we have two other USB ports and, of course, the three Ethernet ports that I mentioned earlier. And also we have two eSATA ports where you can expand the capacity of your NAS. This one has six bays, but you can go all the way to 16 bays by using an expansion unit like the DX517. Another big thing is that we also have a PCIe expansion slot where you can add another 10 gig card if you want, or you can add a 25 gig card. For CPU, the unit has an Intel Xeon D1527 4 core with 2.2 GHz, and we also have 8 GB of memory that you can expand all the way to 32 GB. And I think I'm going to expand it to 32 so I can have more virtual machines. To install the hard drives, you just need to pull these locks on the side. Put the hard drive in the middle and then lock it back in place. So I'm going to install my four hard drives and then we're going to go ahead and turn on the NAS for initial installation. But make sure you also have your Ethernet cable already connected. I'm connecting it to the 10 gig port and it should be connected to the same network where you have your computer. Go ahead and download the Synology Assistant under the Synology website. If you have a computer, I mean a Windows or a Mac, you can just pick whatever works for you. And after you install that, go ahead and turn on the NAS and the Synology Assistant should be able to detect your NAS and you can see what IP it's using. 
and you can go directly and start the installation on the setup page when you click on setup it's going to ask you to install the disk station manager or dsm which is the operating system for your nas when you install now it's going to take time to install and after that the nas is going to restart after the restart now you are ready to use the dsm 7.1 that we just installed and if you look down here you can restore your device if you have a backup on a different server or a different nas you just need to plug in the ip address of that nas here and you can pull your backup and restore it but in our case it's a new install so we don't have anything to restore we just go ahead and click on start now here we need to give a name to our nas i'm going to name it Technology, and then I'm going to create an admin account with a username and a password. Next, it's going to ask if you want to update our NAS automatically. I'm going to say no and we'll go next. And here it's asking if I have an, a Synology account. I don't have it yet. I'll just keep it for now. So now we're ready to create our pools and volumes on this NAS. I'm going to create a big pool with all my hard drives and one single volume with the maximum capacity. For the storage pool, as I said, I'm going to use RAID 5. So I have four hard drives. I'll have 32 terabyte total. So I pick RAID 5 and go next. Here I'm going to drag all my hard drives one by one to add them to the storage pool. And it's telling me here that two of my drives do not meet the requirements. I think that's fine. I still have 32.7 terabyte of capacity. I think because they're coming from, uh, from another NAS, so that's not a problem. Just go ahead and hit next. Here we need to create a new volume on our storage pool. I need to create it with the maximum capacity. So I'll hit max and it will give me 33 terabyte and I'll hit next. For the file system, for regular use, it's recommended to use the BTRFS. I'm going to keep that one and we'll go with next. And now we need to review all the settings that we're about to confirm or apply on the system. So we are creating a storage pool with RAID 5 and 4 hard drives, a total of 32 or 33 terabyte. The volume will be under file system BTRFS, which is OK. So I'm going to confirm and hit apply. Then it's going to tell me that all the data will be erased from the hard drives, which is fine. So I will hit OK. And now it's loading the storage pool and the new volume that we just created. So now the storage pool as well as the volume are optimizing in the background, as you can see here, to make sure the system is all ready and good to go. And this is where we end the video today, guys. In the next video, I'm going to show you how I create users and how I deploy the disks in the network so that all the devices in the network can access the data that I have in the folders on the NAS. And that's going to be very exciting. So yeah, that's it. If you have any questions, let me know. This is where my NAS is sitting. On top, I put the Unify switch. Leave me a like on YouTube and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And if you are studying for the Cisco CCNA 200 301, I have a course on kbtrans.com. It goes from zero to engineer and will teach you everything you need to know to become a network engineer or even more. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care and bye.